Hi everyone, it's Anne at Martin House Flowers. So today I'm in the greenhouse and thank you for the two people <laughs> that commented on uh, actually wanting to see me continue to show my seed starting in the greenhouse. Um, that's basically what I'm going to be doing over the next uh, few months before as we anticipate our you know wonderful spring in 2025. So um, normally I would not start seeds until probably January, February at the earliest with cool flowers for my cut flower garden but because I wanted to have some fresh homegrown basil and some herbs on hand, I thought I would start those. So today I wanted to work on my basil, give it another try. Um, I have grown some Genovese basil that's over here. It's been in the pot here and you know, it's struggling a little bit. Um, so I thought I would give it another try with the three packages of seeds that I have. So I took the pots uh, that were sitting on the grow light tray and I just dumped them into um, my uh, tray here for seed starting and it's potting, it's uh, sorry, it's um, not potting mix, but seed starting mix. I believe it's the um, package, I, I think I picked it up from Walmart. In the winter time, that's the only place that I can seem to find seed starting mix. Um, Lowe's doesn't have it. Um, anyway, they didn't last winter, this past winter. So I do have a fresh bag of burpee seed starting mix. Uh, but I'm going to reuse this potting or starter mix because I had originally had basil seeds in there. So if they happen to have other seedlings of basil in there, then it, it won't you know, be too bad if they happen to germinate again. So um, that's what I'm working on today. I'm going to sow some basil seeds, probably some chives and maybe my Canterbury bells. And I hope... Um, the sound is okay because it's pretty blustery outside. I think it feels like it's about in the, gosh, 50s outside, but in the greenhouse, it's about 70 degrees. So it's doing okay in here. Um, we may have to turn on the gas heat uh, today or tonight um, because we have had a couple of frosty nights. Luckily, all of the plants in the greenhouse have continued to flourish and um, no signs of stress. Uh, the only thing that stressed out a little bit were my new hanging geraniums that are repotted, but I just went ahead and pulled off the little yellow leaves that were on there and they are continuing to thrive. I'm slowing down the watering. I'm not watering as often because of the temperatures being quite cool. So um, I do have a thermometer or a, a, a moisture gauge for pots that I think I'll show you if I have a chance um, in this video, but I, I think I should start using that so that I don't overwater and that is one of the worst culprits that you can do to in, indoor plants. I tend to overwater them. A lot of people talk about how they underwater them, especially in the summer when you have wonderful gardens and outdoor landscapes to take care of and then you kind of lose sight of the demands of indoor plants. And I just don't have a lot of experience with indoor plants. I have a few here that are on my um, grow light shelving unit and they'll, they're gonna have to move when I start my seeds, but for now they're all there and we'll see, cross our fingers, that they continue to thrive in these cooler temperatures um, inside the greenhouse. It's all a big test for me. It's my first season in the greenhouse and um, I appreciate you guys following along with me. Okay, so I have a helper with my seeds and she has started to fill up some of these smaller pots and I'm I chose to use these shallower colorful pots that I used last season for pansies because I'm likely going to transfer these seedlings into containers um, as opposed to putting them into flower beds since obviously it's early in the season so the purple pots. Um, I think these are like two inch pots. I picked them up from Amazon. Uh, I tried to clean them up after the season was over and they're pretty good. I don't sterilize them or anything. I just rinse them out a couple times. So I think we will start with, in the purple pots, the dark opal basils. Whoops. And, um, and then in the blue pots, we can do the Genovese basil. 
in the green pots. So because I had some trouble germinating these this past couple months, I'm going to um, try instead of watering from above, I'm going to water from below through the trays. And so we're going to just put in pretty generously, probably at least minimum four seeds um, per pot. Typically in a 24 cell tray, we do two seeds. And um, these seeds are from MI Gardener are pretty fresh. I just ordered them earlier in 2024. I think I ordered these probably around January, February. So we're still within the first year. They should be fresh enough. I just need to pay better attention to watering them and hopefully with the consistent sunlight in the greenhouse, they will germinate better than what we experienced. So with basil, they are a pretty small, can we see the, the seedlings in, on your hand just so we get an idea of, there we go, oh, a little bit higher, there we go, how big they are. They're actually a nice size. So, um, so basically these are great to grow in containers. I'm just reading the back of the package here and um, used for cooking all year. Great for not only outdoor gardens, but for greenhouse and aquaponic growing as well. So perfect. Um, they are to be uh, sewed about a quarter inch deep. And so if you're just pressing them in lightly, you can then just, she's, you can see that she's um, sprinkling the starter mix on top. So you don't need to cover them. You just sprinkle a little bit of soil above it and just push them in a little bit um, so that they're roughly a quarter inch deep. So, and then we're going to go in and just um, spray water them with my spray bottle and then I will continue to water from underneath. The, the uh, soil was pre-moistened a little bit, so it's, it's not bad. Um, so we'll just carry on. So we've got just the purple basil in there, in the purple. Is that a, okay? Do we have any more other pots? How many do we have? We just have. Oh, okay. Okay, that's okay. All right, so let's move on to the blue. So let's, oh, do you have more seed? Okay, that's fine. Just go ahead and put more in there. Use, use up the blue, use up your seeds that you have. Is that the end of the package? Do we have a lot more? Okay, so let's just do enough for your, all those blue pots that you have potted up. There's okay. the one there, so, and then we'll, We'll mark it so at least we know. Because I don't mark every single pot, I like having these sort of colored colored containers. That way we kind of can reduce the number of um, markers that we use. So let's look for, there's this, this tag that I used last time. So yeah, we'll just clean that off. I have a tray here that we can put them all on. So hopefully we get enough germination here from these um, 10 or 12 pots. How many do we have? 11, do we have 12? Yay! So we have three, six, nine, three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so we have 13 pots. We're gonna mark them with this, this tag that I had used previously. So we know that all the purple and the blue have dark oval basil. I'm just gonna set this aside. Um, yeah, this will do, do all of them. That's a lot of dark opal basil, but it's a pretty basil. We do. I don't remember ever having this one though. I don't know what it tastes like, but I'm sure it's yummy. And then the reason I also wanted to 
try purple basil is if, if you let basil flower, as opposed to using the leaves for cooking, it actually is a great filler flower, but we didn't unfortunately have an opportunity to <laughs> grow them successfully and in time for our cut flower season this summer. But um, yeah. So maybe um, use your hands. Oh, you're not using gloves. You want to use your bare hands? Okay, it's easier. So just um, wipe off the edges if you can. Just like put it back in there so that the tray doesn't get full of dirt. And then we'll water everything all at once. Because if I open the door now, I think I'm going to get a chill. <laughs> the hose is outside. I finally had to leave it outside instead of having the door ajar because it's just getting a little chilly in here. Thank you. That's great. So then after you get, um, did you do about four, four or five seeds per container? Did whatever yeah that's fine we're not really precise if we so the nice thing about like when we grew pansies in these little pots this past season we just transferred I have this little little trough little shovel that I just you know scooped out the seedlings and I just transferred them to a larger pot and that's what we plan to do and maybe we'll just have we have um, little grow lights um, Snapdragons, did we do that? Oh yes, 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 we did. We used 24 cell trays and we used these pots too. We use these pots quite a bit. We use them for pansies and Snapdragons. Now, yep, let's put that one away and work on, let's work on Genevieve's basil because that's, that's a favorite. I was trying not to show my yucky hands. They're so dry. I was cleaning the kitchen today and cleaning all the elements on the stove top and getting baking soda and it just dried up my hands so badly. You can tell that fall, winter is coming when your skin gets really dry and unattractive and you start getting hangnails and all of that. Gardener's hands you need to start moisturizing. Genevieve's basil is this plant over here, I believe. And right there, we've been cutting from this little plant. And full disclosure, I did not grow this Genevieve's basil. Um, our local nursery, uh, Blooming Gardens here in Sycamore, they were giving these away and they honestly were not healthy looking. It was the end of season and we picked up a few perennials and they just gave us this free plant. And I just kept cutting on it, which is sort of like cut flowers where if you just continue to cut on the basil and make sure that you don't let it go to flower, go to seed, if you just keep cutting on it regularly, which I try to do every other day, you know cook with basil um, it'll start to get fuller and healthier so this basil has done so well I, I do credit myself for bringing it back to life versus the basil over there that's not doing great <laughs> I think I've shown my basil in the past so we're hoping that we get better germination this time around. Do we need more potting mix, you think? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll I'll get that prepped while you work on the seeds. You can start. Oh, you have a couple. Oh, you have no more. Okay, so I have this bag of Burpee Organic Seed Starting Mix that should do well. I don't have scissors in here. I have my Japanese knife though.
Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna pre moisten this too. What is that? I'll just throw it in this, <laughs> this bucket. It could just be some plastic. Ooh, ooh, yeah, you okay? Push your sleeves up. This is why I do. Ugh. You just brush yourself. Yeah, what is that? It could just be, um, yeah. Made with coconut coir, unlike peat moss, a renewable and sustainable resource. So it's supposed to have cocoa coir in here versus. Oh, it's the coconut. Yeah, that's what that is. Because on the package, it shows. So you know the husk of a coconut? Yeah. On the inside, you got your flakes of coconut, and that's what the little grayish white stuff is. Satisfying doing it? Yeah. Hang on. Let me just, I just don't want to have a big mess. Oh, I'm all ready. No, I don't want to mess all over the greenhouse table. Well, yeah, that's good. Okay, so let me, this is where I want you to have gloves though, huh? Because we're going to wet it and then you're going to be kind of really messy. And try not to have the packages fall through. I mean, this is pretty level. It should be fine. Okay. Let me just... Have I opened these before? Ooh. No, I just... You just opened them? That's a brand new package. Okay, let me just open this up. Bear, bear the wind. Oh. Okay. I'm right behind you. I got the... Yeah, you can tell the difference with this. Yeah, this starting starter mix. It's very much a sort of, um, what would you call this? Like a milk chocolate brown. You can tell it's a coconut coir. Where did you get it? It's, it's a burpee brand. I think, oh gosh, I hope I got it from Lowe's because I'm going to go back and stock up because last winter i could not find this stuff i found it at walmart and the last package that i grew basil in didn't germinate so i'm wondering if it's the starter mix that wasn't great because i use the same grow lights and method that i've done with all my other seeds and they didn't grow so hopefully this stuff works and you know hopefully you get what you pay for i think that's pretty good okay
just because um, no we'll do chives now so here's the package of chives and try not to get your package wet either because it'll just keep the um here let me try to open this it's always a challenge keep your packages clean so here's the So here's the package of chives that we're using from M.I. Gardner. And um, I need to get you some more pots. Here you go. Here's your chives. Oh, you want to you go outside and rinse out? Yeah, just use your... You can just The hose is on. Careful. So we're going to grab these pink ones. Get these ready for her. You can tell that when kids do it, it's a little messier than I would do it. <laughs> and I think that's more fun <laughs> that way. Kind of like playing in the sand or making mud pies. I remember hearing about how this girl, when she was little, loved to make mud pies with her grandma, Helen. <laughs> so I've got all your little yellow or pink things ready. I hope that's enough. So try not to fill it beyond that line so that it doesn't overflow when I go to water it. Don't want seeds floating around. shouldn't have brought my laptop out here. It's going to get dirty. Three or four of yeah. What are you about? They look bigger. They're bigger than... But they're big, but not the same. Show them, show them to the camera. I don't know if you can oh. see that through my dirt. Yeah, I can kind of see. I can see it. There you go. So I wanted to show you my plant moisture meter that I ordered or purchased from Sycamore Garden Market, Barb talked me into this. And I think it's a great idea because I tend to overwater, as I mentioned. So I'll just demonstrate over here. So this basil plant, I just watered it earlier. So I'm, the um, instructions are that you're supposed to put it on kind of the edge and you dip it about an inch down, I think, and it tells you that it's dry. I'm gonna do it in a couple locations. Can I try? Still says it's dry, so it could be that I, the moisture is. Let's let's measure it here. No, I don't want your your hands on here. Oh, a little bit less. So I need to soak that in more because it's still quite dry. Problem is, I have my computer on this table and I don't want it to leak into my computer. <laughs> so I will water it again. As you can see, the, the surface is moist, but obviously the, um, let me read the, the box again. I think it says you're supposed to. Remember Barb telling us, we were together, weren't we, when we bought this? I think we were together. Huh, doesn't tell you how deep. Step one, insert the probe vertically into your plant pot. In large pots, insert the meter to root level. In smaller pots, insert the meter about halfway. Oh, okay, so we need to go deeper. Adjust the position of the probe until the pointer on the dial swings slightly. Read moisture level on the dial after the reading stabilizes. Remove probe from soil and wipe clean after each use. Never use this meter to test water. It may damage the sensor. I wonder if it's battery operated. I don't think so. So it says you're supposed to go deeper. So I remember Barb telling us that you had to go fairly out here. So I'm going to put it that deep. 
It still says it's dry. I kind of believe it because it's, I put it in three sections. A little bit better over there, but clearly I need to moisten this whole area. So I'm going to use my spray bottle that I've just filled up. See there, it's a little higher. I'm not even catching it in the camera. Oh, there it says it's almost moist, but not quite. So I need to clean that off. Always clean that off. Wow, look how dark it is outside. Oh, wow. Okay. I think that's it then, honey. Thank you. So it's only middle of the afternoon. I don't know. I have no idea what time it is, but it is getting very dark outside. And luckily my camera has got a decent light on it, my iPhone to be exact. So I'm just using the spray bottle just to water in the seedlings. And for some reason, I can't find my markers, my blank ones. I just have the ones I was able to recoup from the garden beds. So I remember that the green and yellow uh, the Genovese basil and this other tray over here has the chives in it. So I'm going to put the dome on top and create a nice little greenhouse effect and then after the germination starts uh, you get about 50% germination once you get about 50% germination then you can take the dome off and start watering from below from underneath and I'll start just putting water in the tray and it just makes for more even moisture and you know I'm trying to troubleshoot why the basil didn't germinate nicely in those deep deep uh, deep pots deeper pots and I'm thinking maybe there was just too much soil in there for the seedlings and they're just it was, just wasn't getting enough moisture they, they were just drying out I think that's kind of the most obvious explanation is that they were just drying out too quickly and I wasn't keeping up with it. So just making sure I've got really good moisture here before I put the dome on. Because once you put the dome on your seedlings, you really don't have to um, water your your pots until you remove the dome because the dome creates its own greenhouse and moisture it keeps the seedlings really moist i'm literally working in the dark here because my solar lights oh they've just kicked in in the greenhouse so i think that's just going to leave them on this tray on this workbench area tonight until I find my, my labels and continue tomorrow when the daylight allows us to continue and I'll finish the um, I'll continue with the Canterbury Bells. So for the end of this video, I thought I would include a little bit of cooking um, because it relates to the garden. 
last year we grew a ton of butternut squash. We had quite the harvest, enough that we had a box load in the basement over the winter. We grew it last summer in the raised beds. And so how many do we have left? How much squash do we have left from last year's harvest? Uh, Maybe just a few. Greg does not want to be mic'd up. Maybe I should mic him up because I'm going to ask him questions. Nope, he's saying no. Doing this against his will. But I wanted to share this recipe because this is our family's favorite squash soup. And Greg makes it best. I think I've only done it once. Um, it's really his specialty. And, and I know anyone that grows butternut squash would appreciate um learning about this soup recipe. So basically you take the butternut squash. I came in from seed starting in the greenhouse and he had already started and I said, oh no, I need to film you. So he's already started with um, baking this butternut squash in the oven for about an hour. Is that right? Um, Has it been baking for about an hour? About 45 okay, so about 45 minutes in the oven. At 375 there's about four and a half minutes left let's take a look at what it looks like there it is there Ooh, we've got one big one and one small one so we just bake it with some butter just a couple slabs of butter in each of the squash sorry about my oven at the bottom there I just have a tray that catches things um, so it's looking very golden and then he has cut cut up the rest of the ingredients, some celery, some carrots, some red onion, and some garlic. And we don't have anything fancy here, but we have our big stock pot, I think we call this. And he's just boiling the water. Actually, this is broth, I'm sorry. So we just use a couple cartons of whatever brand of broth that you, you like. Sometimes we use um, less salt. The less less sodium version and um, I love this little sign I'll keep the kitchen clean eat out my daughter gave me that when she was a teenager <laughs> um, so anyway he is going to wait for the squash to completely bake and then what do we do next honey I'm just boiling the broth. boiling the broth and when do you add in your vegetables? You throw it in here? Yeah. Okay, so then I can't remember this, this thing. We haven't done it since last fall. So throws in the hardest vegetable, which is the carrots. We always boil those first. And then once the, um, once the squash is ready, we then combine it with the broth and we throw everything in a blender. Is that what we do, honey? Okay, so I got the steps right. So we chop up all our veggies, we bake the butternut squash for an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, and then we put the vegetables in the broth, boil it up, combine it all, and put it in a blender. Sometimes we add some cream, if we happen to have some, just to get rid of it. We do have some, we have some half and half cream. Do we wanna do that? add it to it to just thicken it up. So yeah, I think that's what we'll do. And uh, it's a really quick, fast recipe, perfect for a cold, blustery fall day like today.
So Greg just added a little bit of half and half cream. We, whatever we had left over in the refrigerator from when our guests were here, just to give it a little thickness. So even though we use low sodium salt, we were laughing, um, we just added a little bit of salt and pepper. We forgot to add it during the cooking process, but this is totally fine adding it in the blender. That's a lot of pepper, honey. Okay, it's fine. We get comments from the older child when things are a bit bland, don't we? Mmm, looks delicious, honey. Yum. I think that's, whoa, that's the perfect amount of cream. I personally don't like it too, too creamy. So that's just half the batch, but enough for our serving for tonight.